Today I want to talk to you about miking a drum kit. There's about a million ways to do it, and I'm just going to tell you about my technique and what works for me, and hopefully you'll get some pointers from it. So on a kick drum, I'll typically use two microphones, one on the inside that's closer to the beater. It'll pick up the attack of the drum, and I'll do like a beta 52 or something like that on the outside right here in the hole to kind of fill out the bottom end a little more. And usually I'll just kind of throw them in there to start and then listen to see what it sounds like. I'll put the, the 91 right in the middle of the drum and the 52 kind of right in the middle of the hole. And you can't just put a mic on a drum and assume it's gonna work because every drum sounds different, every drummer hits different, sounds different. And if you're hearing that there's too much attack on the inside mic, then you can pull it away from the beater a little bit. Or if you need more attack, you can put it up closer to the beater. That's the biggest part on how to get a drum sound that you like, is moving the mic. A lot of people will try to just use the, the EQ if they don't like it, which it's a great tool to have. But I want to start with the best sound I can get by just moving the microphone to the sweet spot of the drum. One thing that I think is really important in, in kick drums is having something inside to dampen the sound a little bit. If you just get a kick drum with, with nothing inside it, a lot of times to me it sounds like you're bouncing a basketball on the floor. And maybe you like that, but it's not what I'm going for. So typically if you put a little pillow inside or a blanket or just something to put up against the front head and it'll help uh, tone down the basketball. So in the snare drum, I also like to use two microphones whenever possible. My default is a SM57 on top. I've tried other mics here and there and they work, but every, every time I go back to the 57 and I just think it sounds the best every time. On the top mic, I'll do the 57 and typically I'll, I'll get it almost, almost parallel with the drum, just up and angled a little bit. I know some other people like to angle it a lot more and, and kind of aim it right in the center, but I'm weird and different like that, I guess. I'll do it maybe an inch or two, two fingers off of the drum right here and kind of kind of shooting towards the middle of the drum but right on the edge of the rim is where the the head of the microphone sits i like to use a, a bottom microphone whenever the resources are available to pick up the the sound of the snares because if you just use a top mic sometimes it's a little too snappy and you don't like if you're standing here and you, and you hit the snare you hear the snares rattling on the bottom and that's just the natural sound of a snare. And I like to hear that. So it helps a lot if you put a mic on the bottom of the snare to pick that sound up a little bit more and then you can just blend them in however necessary. If you just have a bottom snare mic by itself, you're probably not gonna like the way it sounds because it's gonna be all rattly snares. But I like to put a condenser on the bottom. Right now we have a KSM 141, a Shure microphone. I think it sounds great. So we want these two mics to be in polarity with each other. Uh, that's how you're gonna get your best snare sound. But just know that doesn't always mean that you go to your console and hit the polarity button. There could be a cable wired backwards or just somewhere along the line, something wired backwards. It's just not always a hard and fast rule to hit the polarity. Just listen to what it sounds like. If it sounds good, don't mess with it. So on the hi-hat, I'll use a condenser. We've got the KSM 141 here. I don't really get extremely technical with this most of the time because with Jesus Culture, he uses these huge hi-hats. They're actually crash cymbals and they're really loud. I barely even need this mic really. It's just there for like the quiet moments when I need to turn it up. I'll just mic it kind of right on the edge of the hi-hat here, maybe an inch inside. You don't want to get it right too close to the edge because you'll get this weird whooshy sound when the hats hit together. Sometimes depending on the, the hi-hat sound I'm going for, I'll mic it a little bit closer to the, the bell in the middle of it, get a little bit more of that bell sound. But typically, just right here, a couple inches off, right inside the edge of it. On the toms, we've got the Beta 98, and I'll try to put them about two to three fingers away from the drum. I actually prefer the sound when it's a little further away, like three, three or four fingers. But if you got a big cymbal right next to it like this, the closer you get, the better. Otherwise, you're going to get a whole lot of cymbal bleed. 
For the overhead mics, we've got the KSM 32s here. For my overhead sound, I like to try to get kind of an overall full drum kit sound. I'm not going specifically just for the cymbals like some people may do. So I'll take a cable and measure from the center of the snare drum to the microphone. And you want to make sure that your two overhead mics are about the same distance. And you see how that's not, that's a few inches off right now. So that's actually going to give us a little bit of phasing problems uh, that you may or may not hear in your mix. But it's just better if you can try to, try to line those up to the, the loudest thing on the kit. You got a lot, of, a lot of drums here, a lot of stuff going on. So it's, it's really difficult to try to time align all of that. But if you just try to line them up to the loudest thing on the kit, which is your snare drum for sure, then it should help you.